Right. Welcome to MTG Friends. I'm Ryan. And I'm Josh. And we're doing a new series on MTG's Most Busted. Yes. These are the most busted cards that have ever been printed and why we think they are busted. Or do we think they are on the fence and not so much busted? But as you'll see, pretty much every card we put in this series is going to be seriously busted and we'll give you information as to why we think so. So let's start off with what card, Josh? Mishra's Workshop. That's the card we're doing in this episode. And Mishra's Workshop is a land, not even a legendary land, just a land, tap to add three colorless mana to your mana pool. This mana may only be spent to cast uh, to cast artifacts. Um Awesome card. And we consider this card what? 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 Busted. Bust. Yes. No. Uh, you can't have a busted card without some awesome combos. So you want to get into the first combo that first and easiest one? Yeah. So the one and very obvious one is Trinisphere for a three drop. So if you drop a Mishra's Workshop, you're already off the cuff. You're hitting three mana. Uh, this isn't tap comes in tap. This is just you start off with three minute mana. And you could theoretically have have this in your opening hand. If you've got this in your opening hand with the Trinisphere, you drop the Trinisphere immediately. And as long as Trinisphere is untapped, each spell that would cost less than three mana to play costs three mana to play. Additional mana in the cost may be paid with an extra with any color of mana or colorless mana. For example, a spell that would cost one and a black to play costs three to play instead. Now, I don't know when cards became so wordy. You know, when we first started this game back in the 90s, it's like, this card does this. This card yep. is a 6-6 six, six creature. Anyways, uh, that's a yeah. whole other rant. But, yeah, but Trinisphere, when, when you get that out the first turn, unless your opponent is also playing Mishra's Workshop and has a bunch of artifacts, they can't play anything until Not their thing. third turn. Not a thing. Not a thing. They have to sit there and collect cards and discard cards unless they're playing land. Yeah, basically watch <laughs> you play. So the next yeah. the next card that is a serious supporter of Mishra's Workshop is Walking Ballista. Now this thing is legal in most formats um, except for, I believe, Pioneer. Um, walking Ballista, Artifact Creature, Construct. Walking Ballista enters the battlefield with X 1-1 one, one counters on it, and for 4, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Walking Ballista, remove a 1-1 one, one counter from Walking Ballista, it deals 1 damage to target creature player. So this thing can become G Gigantosaurus Rex within just a handful of turns if you're running Mishra's Workshop, especially if you're like running Tron or you're running some other iteration of... Um, mana generation where you're tapping a land for more than one artifact land in this case. So, And then on top of all of that, you can use these other cards to pump your walking ballista mm -hmm. almost endlessly. You got Thravian Inspector. It's a white creature, human soldier. It costs one, but when it when the inspector enters the battlefield, you investigate, which basically means you put a colorless clue artifact on the battlefield with Two, sacrifice this artifact, draw a card. And couple that with Arcbound Ravenger, which is a two-cost artifact creature that has si sacrifice an artifact, put a plus one, plus one counter on Arcbound Ra Ravenger. Uh -huh. It's also modular one, which means it comes out with a counter on it. And then when it dies, you can move that counter to another artifact creature. Right. <laughs> Meaning you're walking ballista, so you just generate a bunch of artifacts, stack them all with your Ravenger, and then start swinging with your Ravenger until it dies, and then you put all those counters on your walking ballista. Yeah, meanwhile, and your then, opponent can't play, and then you drop a Steel Overseer on top of that, which keeps buffing yeah. all of your artifacts, and it just gets out of hand so quickly that uh, your opponent becomes a spectator. Yeah, yeah <laughs> basically. And, and you're walking around with your ballista at... 10, 10, and you can melt 10, anything they put out there immediately. Yeah, I mean, you have Lodestone Golem, which makes non-artifact spells cost one more to cast, and that's only for four. Uh, you got Sphere of Resistance for two that make all spells cost an additional one to play. Well, mana for you isn't a problem. 
Um, Thorn of Amethyst, yeah. non-creature spell, costs one more to play. And then, of course, you got Phyrexian Revoker that costs you, you a measly two. As Phyrexian Revoker enters the battlefield, name a non-land card. Activated abilities of sources with the chosen name can't be activated. So you can be putting up your, your play field so quickly and so efficiently that it, it, it's... Yeah, and- yeah, if, and if you're playing that Mishra's workshop with an artifact deck, you, you can lock it down with those four cards pretty, pretty hard for the for the, your opponent. It's mm-hmm. it's almost unfair. Yeah, and then you add things like the Talarian Academy, which is actually restricted in Legacy Vintage. Vintage. I I yes. get those two mixed up. Um, uh, they changed the wording some time ago. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, technically you can only run one of them anyways because it is a legendary land, but it's add one blue to your mana pool for each artifact you control. So basically this is a Gaius cr- Cradle uh, for blue slash or artifacts. I mean, it's it's pretty yeah, overwhelming. It's, it's great for, for pumping things up. You know, that, that walking ballista, let's say you've got eight artifacts out there. You just tap one your Tolarian Academy one time, it gets two more counters, which you can then immediately remove to melt something. Yeah, so uh, in summary, Mishra's Workshop, super busted. Um, I mean, I never like to see any cards getting banned, but this seems pretty obvious that it should be banned all around. It's a, it's an amazing card. It is basically, it is a Black Lotus, which... In another episode, we'll talk about whether we think Black Lotus is busted, which should be obvious wow. to everyone. Uh, but this is a Black Lotus, but reoccurring because at least with the Black Lotus, you have to sack it. You don't have to sack yep. Misha's Workshop. So I think it's busted. Yeah, it, it's for sure busted. Um, and, and, and I mean, they clearly think it's busted because they, you know, definitely made it not legal in a lot of formats. Yeah, but hey, if you want one, you can pick one up for a measly, what, $1,400? <laughs> Somewhere around there, you know. Yeah. But if you want a nice one, you're probably going to spend two grand. Yeah, but hopefully you already have a few of these lying around because you've been playing that long. Well, that's pretty much it for this episode. Uh, be a friend of the gathering. Hit the like button. Hit subscribe. Um, in this series, we're going to cover probably another 9 or 10, maybe 11 or 12. Maybe more. Maybe more. Uh, but we figured we start this series off with a very, very obvious busted card. Yep. And if there's any that you want to see us cover, just go ahead and throw it in the comments below, and we'll try and make an episode out of it. And if for some reason you disagree with us, we would definitely like to hear about that. All right. Definitely. All right. See you in the next episode.